Nick, I want to talk about lineage here um, and about uh, yeah. Italian horror and some of the cool things that Italian horror was able to accomplish. Um, okay. For those of you that oh. don't know, and I'll, I'll explain this here, uh, the movie Dawn of the Dead, Dead came out in 1978, one of the most famous horror films of all time. Yeah. Um, came out. One thing that Italian allow, uh, cinema allows in its copyright laws is that any person can make a sequel to any movie in Italy, and it's not illegal. So a lot of Italian producers would go ahead and make sequels, sequels. to movies that yeah. didn't exist. Right, that's how we get um, Troll 2. It has nothing to do with the first Troll, Troll 2 movie. Troll 2 is that way. There's a great yeah. movie called Alien 2 on Earth, which was a like faux sequel to Alien that was really more of a Terminator ripoff. There was a movie called Alien Contamination that was the same way, but instead of the, the face huggers getting on your face, the alien eggs just exploded and killed people with acid, <laughs> um, which turned into like a James Bond plot. Yeah. And there's the most famous example, at least I believe, which was the film Zombie 2. But uh, because, you can also call it Zombie. Yeah, yeah because yeah. Dawn of the Dead was released in Italy as the movie Zombie. So they had to make Zombie 2 in Italy, um, which was released That's in America true. as Zombie. Then when they made Zombie 3 in Italy, they got confused how they were going to release that one in America, so they just called it Zombie 3. Yeah. So in America, there is no Zombie 2. In Italy, there's, there's plenty zombie. of these films. So we're going to talk about Zombie 2, a.k.a. Zombie, or also known as Zombie Flesh Eaters, today on the show. And welcome back to the show. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothi from GoatFilmReviews.com. That was a long, scenic road. Yeah, <laughs> still not, not clear about it. I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for watching and for our love of fans. Thank you for continuing to support the show. You can follow the show on Twitter and on Instagram. We are both members of the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. Check out that website for other critics' reviews as top as ours. And today we're going to talk about what we just mentioned. Zombie 2, Zombie, Zombie, what, from Italy. It's, it's it yeah. almost got more titles than Bay of Blood. <laughs> yeah, I just call it a zombie with a shark movie, but go ahead. There you go. So when a boat belonging to a famous scientist is found on the coast of New York without the scientist, but instead a zombie... Journalist Peter West travels to the Isle of Matul with the scientist's daughter Anne to get answers. What they find is less than they hope and more than they wanted as the island is slowly overrun with the undead. All right, well, a couple episodes ago we talked about The Big Clock, mm -hmm. and that is a movie where Maureen O'Sullivan and John Farrell met and they got married and had kids, and one of them was Mia Farrell. The other one was in this movie. Yeah. The we, sister. Um, Tisa Farrow, who Tisa. I think appears in Manhattan for like a scene, yeah. but is more well known in Italian horror for this film and the film Anthropophagus. She has complete this dead face look that I'm doing right now in the movie. Like, I'm in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter And Peter West, uh, notable for playing uh, yes, in, in a number of, of soap operas, I believe. Uh, also trying to like make sure that the camera is never focused on its bald spot. It's kind of just like turning away a lot. So... <laughs> Tough for me to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. And the other actor is Richard Johnson. He plays mm -hmm. the doctor. Dr. The, Menard. The mad scientist doctor, almost like Transylvania 65,000 doctor. Yep. Just, ah. But um, a notable thing about Richard Johnson is he turned down the role of James Bond. It was offered to him mm. before Sean Connery. He, he said no. Now, he has got a great profile for James Bond. A great side oh, yeah. profile. Yeah, especially when we look at him back in The Haunting, which is where I'm first aware of Richard Johnson as yeah. the doctor from that horror film. He has kind of that perfect kind of like swaggery look to him, um, a little bit less disheveled than he is in this film. But yeah, <laughs> but you have to wear that suit. But I love the embracement of the silliness to this because it it's a little little of the practical effects of oh, like yeah. the zombies coming out of the dirt but you have real people sometimes shots of coming out of the dirt close up of their nose like the buggers coming out and, yeah. I think that's what I appreciate so much about Italian horror is it's it doesn't feel like it's confined or constrained to conventional filmmaking techniques like yeah. if you want to have a scene where a shark fights a zombie underwater it's really in you this put movie. that in your freaking movie yeah. if you want to have if you want to get confusing about is it voodoo zombies or coming back from the dead zombies or bite zombies or what kind of zombies there, you just put all of them in there and just let people Island figure zombies, it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can just kind of embrace whatever you want with the film. What I appreciate about it is that it's it's, it's unapologetically zombie. zombie movie. Like it is un it's not afraid to be like yes, this is caked on makeup as we rise out of the earth. I've I've now watched this movie three or four times recently. Yeah. And fun, fun fact, we've done this recording for this movie about more than once. <laughs> yeah. So we're pretty much following. So I've I've watched this movie like three or four times recently. And I still have that scene when the zombie rises out of the earth. 
and it's got like the maggots crawling on its face. I still have that like awe when I see it happen in the movie. I stop yeah. what I'm doing and I just can't take my eyes off the screen. It is one it's of the still most effective, even though effects. you can see the strings of it pulling. Something. Oh yeah. yeah. And it doesn't bother me in the slightest, you know? No, but that's still, the whole intent of it. I still have the moment with the eyeball and the, and the, the shattered door piece where I'm like, wait, i got to watch this part real quick again. Like, I've yeah. seen it five five times maybe in the so past the most, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. The most interesting, the, the two famous scenes of the movie is when she gets the stake through her eyeball. Yep. And then the zombie versus shark in the movie. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's that slow mechanic, and I'm sure... I'm sure um, Dario Argento saw this, and I'll, I'll do one better for opera when the, she gets a bullet through her eye. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Italians love their eye gore. Um, <laughs> just so. like the gory, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it's it's some area where some people just can't handle eye gore, and it's it's not easy to watch. It isn't, but it's something where it's like it's it's almost like the the last you know stand for gore is like we're gonna go for the eye. Yeah. Um, yep. I I think yeah. about that scene. And I, I'm it surprised still that look, it, it still looks as well fake, as it but does. still you're like, ah, oh, it's going in. Yeah, it, it goes in. The fake part was it going in. The, the part that I find realistic is the eye coming out when you see yeah. the grooves of it. Um, going back to the zombie shark thing too, it's it's a scene that was shot without uh, director Lucio Fulci. Yeah, I learned about that. Yeah, um, and the person playing the zombie didn't show up, didn't want to take part in the film because they. Didn't, Maybe because they were on the scene with a friggin' shark, uh, yeah. and so the trainer got in the shark, the zombie makeup, and went underwater and did the scene. And the, it was added to the film without Fulci's involvement. Fulci was very famously not happy that this film was going to be made as a faux sequel. Uh, this movie was in production long before Dawn of the Dead became the hit yeah. that it was, and was not happy that this film was kind of shoehorned in as a fake sequel. That scenes were shot in New York so that the film would feel more accessible to Americans. What I always find funny is that. Americans are so like against watching a movie that doesn't feel like it was shot by Americans. That movie th that other countries had to make it like fake Americans. You know, yeah, a little, a little yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. it's kind of like when we criticize movies for for shooting scenes in China so that they can get the Chinese release, and it's like, yeah, they were doing the same thing to us like back in the eighties. So yeah. I was, it's almost the disdain of like uh, Sofia Coppola doing Marie Antoinette. Yeah, and it's an American version of somebody in France that they have regard for. Yeah, it's almost like France doing a. French doing a movie about George Washington. We already have some res reservations yep. about you guys doing something about George Washington. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it goes back to that famous hot fuzz line. He's not even from round here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's Fulci. Um, I know Fulci because you know I grew up. I was a kid in the early '80s, so I know about the house on the, in the cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, the New York Ripper. I know where he goes after this. Yeah. This is my first Lucio Fulci film. Yeah. Um. I've I recently became not even recently back in 2014 I believe it was I became enamored with Italian horror. I remember watching uh, Suspiria for the first time, and I was watching at like three in the morning. So I was gonna fall asleep, and I had to I paused the film, went to bed, woke up the next morning, and started playing it again immediately yeah. afterwards. I yeah. fell in love with demons. I fell in love with all these kinds of like Italian horror films from the time of the Church uh, that I, I constantly go it's back to later, and rewatch. Eight and nine, yeah. And there's something just wholly special about a horror film that's not afraid to be for horror fans. They're not trying to make the the average people. They're not like Scream, where they want to be accessible to everything. They're no. like, no, we are making this for the people that absolutely want to see this. Yeah. And there is an underground level. We're going to show a massacre, bloody massacre, and then women are going to have their clothes off. Yep. That's yeah, that, <laughs> there's a completely unnecessary, there's multiple unnecessary nude scenes in this film, and you're like... Yeah, it does keep people. They're not afraid seats. to use the male gazing of, oh, it's time to school snorkel, and they're like up and down. Let's, well, yeah. for horror fans, nudity and gore kind of go hand in hand in that they're both things that make viewers go. Yeah, we know uh, about and, that. And from pay the burning. attention to them. Yeah, the it's like you know, if you can't get one, go for the other. My um, famous is the burning. They have to have an outdoor shower right on the lake. Like, yep, <laughs> that's that's short enough for the kids to come up and be like, oh. Huh. Because the girl's at the shower, but it's right near the well, lake. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think um, the, the Italian horror movement has been going on for decades. There's a great documentary in pre-production from the makers of In Search of Darkness called uh, Nightmare Cinema that yeah. is all about the Italian horror movement. And it's something really fascinating. And this is one of the most famous examples of it. It's just that, that we were able to faux sequelize something that almost became as famous as some of Romero's sequels amongst people that you watch. I agree. You know? I agree. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to note that George A. Romero's uh, Living Dead franchise is almost a choose-your-own-adventure 
because the original Night of the Living Dead has the sequel Dawn of the Dead, but then there was also the sequel like Night of the Living Dead 30th Anniversary Edition, which turned into Children of the Dead. And then the Dawn of the Dead breaks off into Zombie and Day of the Dead. Day yeah. of the Dead breaks off into Land of the Dead or Day of the Dead 2, which is terrible. Like, and every film has been remade and sequelized to the nth degree that it's like the lineage is just confusing as hell. No, if you put a chart, it'd be very confusing. I was just confusing ex explaining the f this episode. Exactly. And I know that I already know. I've explained it before. Yeah, you explained it before, and it's still kind of confusing. Yeah. Yeah. But so also, if you want to check out, I think this is the inspiration for Wes Craven, The Dew, Serpent, and the Rainbow. I think there's got to be some part of it that Craven had to be aware, aware of this movie. Yeah. This movie, what year again? Uh, this would be a 1979. Yeah, Serpent and the Rainbow. Is that 1989 or 88? 87. Okay. So, yeah, right about that, yeah. you know. Um, Which is voodoo zombie going on an island and uh, Bill Pullman Bill Pullman investigating yeah well the, the, the script itself was actually less influenced by Dawn of the Dead and more influenced by the voodoo zombies it was influenced by films like The Island of Dr. Moreau I Walked with a Zombie The Walking Dead Voodoo Island you mentioned that to, yeah Val that. Luton's I Walked with a Zombie Cat People yep yeah. which is fun we've, we've kind of skirted around I Walked with a Zombie so long we might have covered it at we some point we might have covered it eventually by the end um, of this year but yeah, it's it was influenced by the voodoo zombie elements of it and just kind of like made into a traditional Romero zombie film at the same time. Uh, but th the marriage of the two is rather interesting because it does embrace those voodoo elements a lot. Yeah. Uh, and even so, that's probably where that Serpent and the Rainbow does come from is because this film is, has has the same inspirations, at least. Yeah, that's yep. just want to bring it out. But also the guys who made zo the zombies were kind of like caked on makeup. Yeah, kind of call, called the, the cake. The, cake, right? the caked on makeup. The yeah. caked on makeup quotes. Uh, makeup was done by Giannetti De Rossi, who was known for the caked on makeup appeal. It's just layers. Of, it's just yeah. You know, and I think uh, De Rossi also had that I idea of like it's it's gross to watch parts of its flesh falling <laughs> off as it's walking. Yes. So I'm going to put more stuff on there yes. <laughs> so that it does fall off. And you're in the tropical location, and of course, this is. And I would argue that the the zombie that's featured on most of the posters is more iconic than any of the Dawn of the Dead zombies because of how it looks. Because the Dawn of the Dead zombies are kind of just blue makeup, you yeah. know, wandering around, you know. Yes. Um, this is yeah. one where it's like, this is an iconic looking creature. It's got the worms on the face. Most of the uh, extras were not aware of the fact that there would be worms and maggots on their faces. Like real life. Yeah, right which was which probably like, would have been rather shocking uh, to be a part of. I wouldn't have done it. set and like, all right, where's the worms? What, 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 what? Yeah, all right, bury, bury John over there so we can dig him up with the maggots. Yeah, um, yeah Giannotti de Rossi was, was famous for that kind of makeup and it influenced a lot of what would come with later zombie horror films. In fact, like I said, there's a zombie too. Or there's a zombie three, there's a zombie, zombie three. four, a zombie five. Uh, there was definitely influences on a lot of that. And there was zombie cinema throughout a lot of it. Uh, a lot of Italian horror had that kind of appeal because of what was done here. I'm, my favorite scene that really doesn't take place for zombies, but I really get a chuckle out of Richard Johnson and his wife. They're one and only scene. They're just shouting at each other. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're married. I hate you. It's just shouting, shouting, shouting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's this hard exposition. Yeah, before she gets a uh, steak through an eye. But. Richard Johnson needs to respect the fact that he's getting to be up there in age when this movie comes out. And if you're married to Olga Car Carlados, you you respect her. Okay, she came to this island with you, and she's the ones, doing nude the scenes for no they have together in the movie. They're like, ah, da, 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 da. it's like, can we just the volume? It was no. funny. Is it reminds me of there was a similar scene at the beginning of Bay of Blood. Which was two people that were supposedly in love shouting at each other it was, from yeah, the yeah. staircase, and it's yeah. the same kind of effect that you get where it's like, well, we need to pad the runtime, give a shouting match scene or something. Is I don't something know. Something for Italians to just have domestic, just shout at each other all the time. Just, yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. It's okay. it's impassioned, you know. It's it's impassioned speech. <laughs> yeah, and I do love when that scene. I think it's Peter West, and then when they get in the woods and they realize they're at a cemetery. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and they looked around and go, oh. This is a grave. That's another grave. But then they slowly merge out. Well, yeah. And it's it's commonly assumed that, you know, amongst people who haven't watched the Romero films, there's the belief that Romero invented the zombies crawling out of the grave thing. That doesn't happen in any Romero films. No, they said um, this one. Even, you know, Night of the Living Dead has a scene at a, at a graveyard, but no one's climbing out of the ground. It's this film and Return they're of the coming, Living yeah, Dead. Yeah, they're coming to get you. And yeah. All of a sudden they're there, there. And he's just there. Yeah. Um, we have this film and we have Return of the Living Dead to thank for these zombies crawling out of the 
of the Sad. grave scenes, you yeah, know? Get out of the sand. And they're um, like Spanish conquistadors or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's also it's a Romeroism too, because Romero also made all of his zombies into characters. He had like the Hari Krishna and he had the you know, the the business guy that was still carrying his like briefcase when he's mm-hmm. going through and stuff. Like mm-hmm. Romero respected his zombies enough to make them characters. And I think that's kind of what's being done here as well. Uh, it reminds like even me of Land of the Zom. Um, oh yeah, Land, Land of, of the, the Dead. Dead. Like there's like uh, Big Big Papa. Is that the name of him? The guy who just runs the gas station. Yeah, just mechanically. All the here's the bell. He's just standing there, just like turning his gas pump as he's yeah, standing it's just, there. It's, yeah, the mechanical. Yeah. Yeah. So making your characters zombies kind of makes them more memorable. You know, I mean, and I think uh, this the, the Spanish conquistador thing reminds me of the Blind Dead. Which was not exactly a, a zombie movie, but every night these I've never these, heard of those, uh, these creatures would come out. These Knights Templar would come out, and they were Knights Templar undead, riding undead horses and stuff like that. It's a that really out. brilliant looking movie uh, that had a number of sequels. But it's like going back to this like classic historical look, but then making them zombies kind of adds a yeah. historical mythos to a gore mythos. <laughs> and this is probably the start weird. of it, right? I think this was the first one that I, I I became generally aware of it, at least in the Italian world. Because, again, Dawn of the Dead did a little bit before, yeah. too. So. It'd be fascinating to see documentaries on Italian horror, especially the 70s I and can't 80s. wait for that, that nightmare cinema. When that thing goes live and asks for, for money, please donate to it, because I am. It's fascinating, because <laughs> they're, they're not afraid to go gaudy and just over the top. and just They're all obsessed with body. I think it's because they're so Christian. Yep. About resurrection and Eucharist and body and all it's just and then they de- 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 go de- it, it de- means also. more. I think death yeah. means more uh, from a spiritual sense in in outside of America than it does here. Yeah. We tend to view. I mean, if you just watched how we how we viewed pandemic numbers of the number of people dying every day, like we we view death very differently than people outside of America do. And I think there's spiritualness to it that makes it all the more unnerving. I think. Um, and yeah. you know, going back to it, this we talked about how they like the gaudiness, the gimmick of it all. Like the film was rated X first, and then it was re-rated as R, and then it was labeled as a video nasty and banned um, and prosecuted Which for it. Which elevates it even more because it's almost like you, I would say it's a cult classic. Oh because yeah, because it's almost like oh no, nobody. People tell me I shouldn't see this. It makes it all, more, real, all the more reason why. Yeah, it's not as intense as a film like Cannibal Holocaust, but I think it carries a lot of the same weight that that film yeah. does. Um, and there's even you know the the William Castle gimmick that takes place here because when they they handed out barf bags when people showed up to the theater. Yeah, it's a, they, you know yeah. they embraced people the gimmick out quite a bit. This movie. Yeah. Um, you know, and even even again Americanizing the film that they took, they actually you know shot some scenes in New York so they get that New York flavor and make people appreciate. Yeah, the, the film. ending where they had him just in the early morning of New York City walking the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. And you can tell too they they didn't have the funding to get a permit to get a permit to shoot. Because they couldn't stop the cars from driving. So the cars are still driving as if it's a normal Monday. <laughs> yeah. But, like, there's a wall of zombies walking down the bridge. Um, but they even shot in some New York offices, uh, guerrilla style, and ended up accidentally interrupting a meeting with Rupert Murdoch, who was the, in the office working that day. And they wandered in to try and shoot a scene with uh, Ian McCullough uh, to get him, the story going. <laughs> and, and they kind of, like, accidentally invaded that, too, which is, like, guerrilla filmmaking in America from an Italian crew is... that's. That's right. next level. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think if you love horror movies, especially the zombie genre, you know, it's a part of, I think, a requirement to see yep. it. Yeah. I've been sitting on this DVD for like Because I knew, years. I knew, I didn't know where this came from, but I knew about the zombie versus shark thing. Mm. I knew that existed. I just didn't know what format of a movie. It's did. out there in the ether and you have yeah. to cover it, you know? Yeah. I think uh, I've been sitting on this DVD for like 10 years. I picked this up a long time ago. And the irony, of course, is that I, I didn't watch it for 10 years and then I've seen it five times. Now I've seen it five times. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm one of those people now that I really want to go see Zombie 3 and Zombie 4 and Zombie 5 and like really continue to embrace. I've been trying to hunt down more Italian cinema. So this works really well in my wheelhouse. This is, for me, an incredible piece of entertainment. I was so entertained, and every time I've rewatched it, I have not lost the entertainment from it. <laughs> I've enjoyed it just as much, if not more, on rewatches. It's a great popcorn movie. It's a great it's like hangout underground with your friends. label called classic. Yeah, and it goes back to Bay of Blood and Blood Diner, where you want to get a couple of friends together and just watch some insanity unfold. And I think that's again another staple of Italian horror was that a lot of what they did back in the '80s and '90s and, and '70s too was they had movies where it wasn't so predicated on if you miss a line of dialogue, you don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the stuff was straightforward, but it allows you to get some buddies together and just watch some carnage un- unload. And that, for me, is incredibly uh, 
helpful. <laughs> so the next time I see you at a, the horror convention or Crypticon, I'm going to ask you, if part of requirement, have you seen Zombie 2? Yeah, I feel like we need to put together a list of like the, the requirements to be a... To be a horror fan is the, the, yeah. the scavenger hunt list, if you will. Yeah. It has a great ending to it. Because you know it's got a gun blazing inside the house and the zombies are coming after. You know you're going to go there and you just shoot every shoot yep. way out. Yep. And, the, and the incredible, like, score. That, dynamite. Like, Italian, yeah. like, goblin-esque score without yeah. being goblin. Um, yeah, absolutely. One of the one of my favorite films now of recent viewing has been this one, and, and one I'm going to be revisiting a lot. I think I know, I know you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can go it's back. worked immensely well for me, and I, I can't wait to see it again. Even though I've already seen it a few times. Uh, but what do you think about Zombie Two, AK Zombies, AK Zombie Flesh Eaters, whatever you're going to call it? Whatever let you want to call it, right? It has yeah. so many titles. So let us know down in the comments section below what you thought about this film, and here let's have some fun here too. Tell us your favorite. Romero related ah, zombie film right. as it like this one or one of its sequels Return of the Living Dead or one of its sequels anything that George A. Romero didn't make but is influenced by his films you can talk about one of the remakes let us know what you thought about it down in the comments section below and which one of those should we cover next on the show because you know there's tons of horror movies out there and I'm sure I'll be pushing it on a Saturdays right yeah, so, yeah exactly so uh, while you're down there please like and subscribe to the video they're two things that don't cost a dime and they help to support the channel and make sure you never miss a new episode and click that bell icon down there as well that will make sure that you get notifications when the new episodes drop uh, you can also donate a cup of coffee every single month to join the patreon the links down in the description and while you're down there and, and joining that you can help us pick one of the films that we cover every single month you can get invested with uh, picks with Kyle and Nick our monthly show where we give you movie mm -hmm. recommendations we recently did best David Cronenberg films and this month we're going to be doing our top films from 1997 so please very, join us over there soon. yeah so once again folks you can find all my film reviews over at goatfilmreviews.com you can find my show, the St. Paul Filmcast, anywhere you find podcasts. All right, so if you're driving to work and you see a bunch of zombies walking into your city, don't movie. worry, it's fine. They're making a movie. Yeah.